Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and I'm so happy to have on this program one of the real leaders of our community, our spiritual community in New York, Sharon Gannon from Jiva Mukti Yoga. You have made yoga a household name, at least in New York, and I, I think so. I think you and, and David Life have put yoga on the map in a way that people um, weren't aware of the, the benefits of yoga before you came forward with Jiva Mukti. But we're not going to talk about that just yet. We're actually going to talk about a cookbook that Sharon <laughs> has written called Simple Recipes for Joy, 200 Delicious Vegan Recipes. What made you choose these particular recipes? I mean, why? <laughs> no, I mean, what, what do you like? I'm just, okay, 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 yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to admit. Yes. I was really stupid, quite naive, when okay. it came to writing cookbooks. I didn't know until after this cookbook uh -huh. was finished that most people who write cookbooks mm -hmm. don't make up their own recipes. Oh. They um, gather recipes and maybe tweak them a uh -huh. bit. Um, I, I thought that would be cheating. I think so. Well, but you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I think it's good to do, but uh, I wish I would have done that. It would have saved me a lot of time. So and you a lot actually of made 200 recipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I had to, you know, I go uh, trial and error by scratch. Like if I wanted to do uh, the pumpkin pie, I mean, okay, pumpkin pie, you need a, a crust. So uh, trial and error, just like flour, okay, water, and a lot of things went into the compost. No eggs. Of course, no eggs. Well, I know, but I guess people don't <laughs> understand. You know, they no, think okay, vegan means. No animal products. At all. So no honey? No honey, no mm. eggs, no milk, no, no cheese, no... <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, but so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I know No this whale is, blubber, no, no, none of that. This is something none you're of that juicy stuff. really passionate about. And <laughs> yes. so what was your experience actually in making these things? I mean, were there things that you thought you liked that you didn't like? <laughs> no, 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 no. I started cooking... Um, uh, you know, I would I would cook, I'd make a dinner party, mm. and um, then if it tasted good and everybody else voted who came to the party that, hey, that was good, I wrote it down. Oh. And so I just amassed these recipes. I saved them. And then I, I made just a little, you know, printout book for myself mm -hmm. from the computer and would give it to friends, you know, now and then who were interested. And, um, and then just to kind of tidy up all the stuff in my office, uh -huh. I decided, hey, let's, let's really put this together with some pictures and make a nice little book. And, and I was going to publish it myself, but um, then I had a friend who's an agent who took it around for me and got a lot of rejections. Well, that's normal, I guess. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. No problem. I mean, I was like, fine, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and then one day last year, I got a call from a lovely, lovely, amazing woman from Penguin, mm -hmm. Penguin Publishing House. And um, she said, are you Sharon Gannon? I said, yes. She said, I, I heard you have a cookbook. Mm -hmm. um, I think we might be interested. Would you come into the office and talk about it? That was how it happened. Great. It is a beautifully <laughs> made book. It's a yeah. quite a lovely uh, yeah. production. There's some yeah. pictures of you, a little <laughs> intro. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of um, there's stuff in there about how to bless your food, how to offer your food to God, which I don't think you're going to find in most vegan cookbooks. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's uh, stuff about the cafe, the Jiva Mukti Cafe. Um, all the recipes from the cafe are in this book. Oh, um, and uh, and plus, you know, well, a plus lot more. the cleansing diet. In, yeah, is there's in there's two cleansing talk, diets. Yeah. Talk about that because you know it's hard to make a really delicious recipe as for a cleansing diet, or is it? I mean, what goes into a cleansing diet in these particular <laughs> recipes? Usually, it's just like master cleanser or something. You know, it's just like yeah, master cleanser. That, that's but, that's. I think that is. Too, I've gone on the master cleanse. I, mm -hmm. Most everyone, yeah, our age has, but um, <laughs> <laughs> at one point. Um, uh, but, you know, the master cleanse is, is really restrictive, uh, and um, basically you're drinking sugar water. And um, cayenne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what's in your um, cleansing? Well, there's two different cleansing diets. One is um, basically porridge, like oatmeal oh. and then kitchery. And uh, the second one is uh, more just a raw food. 
-hmm. like salads and soups and juices. Do you bring in some of the Ayurvedic, um, I mean, kitchery is sort of an Ayurvedic technique for cleansing. Yeah, it cleansing. is, it is, it is. Do you bring a you lot You know of, your stuff, I don't do you? Know, yeah, I've you been do. Around, I, yeah. But do you bring a lot of that into these recipes? I mean, what style? The recipes yeah. in this book are things I like to eat. Mm. Basically, that's like Jiva Mukta Yoga. Jiva Mukta Yoga comes from things I did myself, mm -hmm. you know, and um, like playing music in class and... Um, the asana sequences and, and all of that. What do you think made Jiva Mukti so successful? God. God? I mean, of course, God but, does everything. No, I but mean, there's but, a lot of yoga schools out there that weren't as successful as Jiva Mukti. It just took off. I mean, you're in your fourth place. I remember even when you were back, well, you were there before Second Avenue or someplace else, but I remember yeah, that. Yeah, two other places. I remember <laughs> I got in on Second Avenue. Yes, and, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. And then you moved down to Lafayette, and then you yeah. have your place you're in now, but yeah. it kept growing. What, mm -hmm. what were you doing <laughs> to, just because you were passionate about yoga? You know, it's the community. Um, Jiva Mukti exists because the community of New Yorkers mm -hmm. um, made it happen and kept coming. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. it wouldn't <laughs> it wouldn't be around if if people didn't want to come to it. Right. Um, we don't go in and you uh, pull people off the street and force them to stand no, on no, their hands. No, no, but you brought a quality, <laughs> I think, of. Um, intentional spirituality to the yoga. That's what I find. Well, like I said, that was what I was interested in. Yeah. So that's what I offered. I didn't change Yeah. Uh, just because people wanted to uh, learn yoga from, from David and myself. We didn't change what we were doing mm -hmm. ourselves. But And I didn't underestimate people, I suppose. Right. Uh, I didn't feel I had to dumb it down right. for dumb people. I don't really know any dumb people, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and if you did, you wouldn't want to know them. <laughs> I mean, uh, everyone I've ever met in my life is um, smart, mm -hmm. uh, uh, interested, uh, passionate about um, their lives, mm -hmm. about the world. And, um, I mean, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be able to have been with these people and, and contributed to their, <laughs> you know, health and I think we did it together. Yeah. We did it together. You and the um community. We did it together. I mean, um certainly I uh, this is not just my idea imposed. No. Um like I said, the community the which is was they looking, supported it, I suppose, yeah. But they were looking I mean, you sort of came in at the right time when there was a spiritual hunger. I mean, yeah. there still is, but, you know, you provided a, a space for those seeking. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. yoga is a body, mind, spirit discipline, in a sense. Yeah. Right? I mean, and is... Right. What and, do you know about it? What do I know about it? <laughs> I could know more. <laughs> you could teach me. <laughs> Read the book. <laughs> I'll read the book, but... Was this a yoga of sorts? <laughs> of course. Of course, food is a... I mean, look, the physical practice of yoga um, certainly addresses the food body called the Anamaya Kosha, and that's oh. made of the food you eat. Your physical body is made right. of the food you eat. Okay. So um, that food should be obtained compassionately mm. and uh, no murder and slavery and torture and sex abuse involved. Okay. And that means vegan. <laughs> <laughs> But do you fry stuff? I mean, is there sure. frying sauteed? Sure. And, um, okay, do yeah. you believe in raw food diets as a strict thing? I'm just curious. Do I believe in it? I, do you believe it? It does you happen. It? People do eat raw food. I believe this, that they would, do. Would you, would you recommend <laughs> it, though? Um, I recommend things that work for me, because um, that's what I know does best. Does that work for you? No. It doesn't. I like, I like hot things. I mean, I eat lots of raw things. Mm -hmm. That's how um, I but feel. I don't. I don't eat exclusively raw food. No. Right. It doesn't work for me. It's exclusive raw food. It was quite a craze, you know, quite a like fad for a long right. time. But. But were you ever one to like fall for fads? I, I wasn't. No. No. Me, me but, neither. But, so you know. But, but there are a lot of people were saying, "Oh, I'm 100 percent raw. I'm 90 percent raw." But you know, it, I, I need warm things in the winter. Yeah. Well, I think. I, we have to figure out what we need, and that's a good thing to do, to be that intuitive and, and mm. be able to listen to what you need, sure. Yeah, so who have been some of your big influences in your life? I mean, as far as teachers and spiritual teachers and yogis, and I'm just curious where, you, where you've come from, your lineage in a sense, like what's worked for you? I was blessed with 
uh, some really great enlightened beings yeah. who blessed me, who loved me, who guided me, and uh, without their presence in my life, uh, my life would be <laughs> very dark indeed. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, would you like to know about yeah, them? Yeah, I would like to. Sri Brahmananda Saraswati. Uh, was a living master. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. In India, New York. Or? Indian, but um, I met him uh -huh. in New York. Uh -huh. uh, he ha started an ashram called Ananda Ashram. Oh, in Monroe, upstate oh, New yeah, York. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know who you mean. Yeah. Yes. And he also had the Yoga Society of New York here in Manhattan. He was a Sanskrit scholar, wasn't a he? Sanskrit scholar. Oh. So he instilled in David and myself a love and a discipline for the study of Sanskrit. Uh -huh. And also Nada Yoga, he was he was really mm -hmm. into Nada Yoga. Was that sort of your awakening of consciousness, or did it happen before you met him? Uh, before mm -hmm. I met him physically, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you were sensing him, and then yes, yes, and, and meeting him sort of opened the door. When I met him, and I didn't meet him until um, uh, the early 1990s. Uh -huh. Um, it was like, oh, yes, I know you. We're connected. It was mm -hmm. a sense of relief. Then there was Swami Nirmalananda. Mm -hmm. And Swami Nirmalananda uh, lived in the B.R. Hills. That's BR. in South B.R. Hills mm -hmm. in uh, South India. Okay. Uh, between Mysore and Bangalore. Okay. In a wild forest sanctuary by mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm in a small ashram, a one-man ashram. And uh, I, I learned about him because I used to be a member of the Libertarian Book Club mm -hmm. in New York City when, when in my anarchist days. Right, you were an anarchist performing artist, singer, yeah. performer, all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm still an anarchist. Okay. But a little bit different take on anarchy um, through the blessing of Swami Nirmalananda, who called himself an anarchist Swami. So he started to write to the Libertarian Book Club asking for pen pals. Oh. And uh, Peter Lamborn Wilson, who was my friend, uh, said, you know, Sharon, uh, I don't have the time to write to this Swami, and none of us do. Uh, maybe this is something that you'd like to, mm -hmm. to do. So we became pen pals, uh -huh. Swami Nirmalananda and myself. And then when David and I went to India for the first time, 1986, I think, we went, and one of the uh, objectives of that meeting was to meet Swami Nirmalananda. Mm. And so uh, he taught me that anarchy, true anarchy, means self-rule, mm. but self with a capital S, divine right. self, yeah. not ego self. So that turned my whole trip around. And um, he was an animal rights activist. He was a vegan. He was an Indian man, which is like unheard of. I had never heard about this before. Um, and, you know, Indian man way in the middle of nowhere with many Indian devotees mm. being a vegan for ethical reasons uh -huh. because of the way the animals are treated. He wouldn't even take milk products. But a, a lot of Indians are, are veg I mean, vegetarian. Vegetarian, yeah, yes. Yeah, but they're not vegans right. necessarily. Yeah. And, and he was because... Yeah. Um, why the cruelty uh, towards cows and... Oh, to, towards cows because yeah. people in India think the milk of the cows is the blessing of the cows. Yes. And, and, and that's not something he agreed with. No, he didn't. Why is that? Is it cruel to take milk from a cow? Or? Yes. Well, we, if you think slavery is cruel, if you think um, oh, we're sexual them. abuse is cruel, you know, cows are sexually abused. They they're, are sexually abused? from mm -hmm. Oh, because we're robbing the milk from the young? They're from, raped. For their milk? For, well, they're no, killed. to make them pregnant. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh. a cow gives milk. Because either because she's pregnant oh. or because she just had a baby and she's lactating. Oh, oh So most cows that are milked in the world today are not allowed to be with the boyfriend of their choice. Uh -huh. um, it's an arranged marriage They are artificially, in India. <laughs> truly arranged, artificially inseminated oh. through a human being who takes a plunger. Oh, you know, I see. That's that's rape. Oh, I see. So yeah. that's the and the cows ugly. suffer. So. Is there a big movement for veganism in India, or is it just just you? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, I mean, yeah. um, I've made a lot of friends, Indian mm -hmm. uh, friends, and um, it's happening. 
It's happening. What about honey? I guess we're robbing the, yes. um, the hive. The poor bees, they work so hard. <laughs> it takes so much to produce that honey, and then we go ahead and take it and then give them sugar water. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, okay, the yoga teaches that whatever you want yeah. in life, you can have if you make it happen for someone else. Uh -huh. And if you want to be happy, don't make others unhappy. Mm. If you want to be free, don't enslave others. In all your actions, though. Not in all in, your you actions. You have to be re accountable yeah. for everything. So, you know, you do your best. I mean, yoga gives ahimsa and satya and mm -hmm. ashtaya and brahmacharya and parigraha as practices. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good news because that implies you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You just do your best. What do you mean you don't have to be perfect? What well, can you do that you can get away okay, with? Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. For instance... Ahimsa means nonviolence, right, okay. or non-harming. So none of us can be truly perfect in that because right, we just step by on living, an ant. Yeah. yeah, wearing clothes. I mean, yeah. cotton clothes. Yeah, that yeah. you know, the the harvesting of the cotton yeah, yeah. causes some harm. So you can be humble about it mm -hmm. and just do your best. And being a vegan is really it causes the least amount of harm. Mm -hmm. That's all. So that's, that's what the practice is. Uh, being in the world, the yoga practice, do your best and cause the least amount yeah, of harm. Yeah, and yeah. And uplift people. Yes. Well, I mean, I think the two things to, um, to cultivate, in order to cultivate devotion for God or getting closer to God, is one, remember God, mm. and two, be kind to others. Mm. Be kind to others. Were you connected to any of the female um, swamis? Do you want to hear about, yes. I have two other I do really wanna, important I wanna, teachers. I do want to hear about that. Um, female teachers, Anandamai Ma. Oh, I love yes. You actually remind me a little bit of Anandamai Ma. Oh, Mama. no, no. I mean, I mean, that is a huge uh, blessing, Yeah. Uh, for goodness sake. Did you meet her, though? She was not alive. I did not. Oh. Well, she was. She died in 1984, oh, right? So we, we could have met her, but I did not. But I... I wish I had been more mm. forthcoming and more courageous to go to India earlier, mm. but that my karmas weren't good enough. You know, my favorite part of autobiography of a yogi where Yogananda the meets, yeah. he meets her, and, Me too. and Me she too. says, I was the same when I was born, I was the same when I was married, I am the same now, I've always been the same. Alan, you have a great memory. Yeah, well that was a part that, that was out of that whole four, five hundred page book, it was that. You know, I agree. That's what I remember, too, out of that book. <laughs> yes, that's Really. Funny. Well, she's a presence. She is, I mean, you just look at her face, and she would go into bliss, and you can, yeah, feel that Shakti coming off her pictures yeah. still. Yes. Uh, I surround myself with her pictures. I love uh, to look at her. Yeah, and you know? I know she's, there's the, her samadhi is in Harbar, and yeah. I was, I was there during one of the Kumbh Melas, oh. sitting at her samadhi. I visit her. I visited a few of her ashrams, oh. the one in Vrindavan, oh. you know, where her her bed is there. And I remember going there and laying my head down on that bed and feeling her presence, feeling, oh. you know, electricity. Wow, Whoa, it's very powerful. I felt that in Shirdi for with Shirdi Baba. Oh. I went to. Sh Have you been to Shirdi? No. Oh, he will talk to you. You go wow. to his samadhi. You put your head there, and it's like. Hello, <laughs> he's talking. Yes. So there's some amazing saints there. Who and she's beautiful. Thank you. But who else was your? Yeah. Sri K. Patavi Joyce. Oh, Patavi Joyce. Yes. The yo the yogi. I mean, the doing enlightened yo master. Yes. Ah, what was he like? Kind, hmm. kind, spicy, uh, fun, uh, no nonsense, hmm. uh, um, beautiful. Sly, like a fox. Really? Oh, yeah. Very clever. Did you have a lot of interactions with yeah. him? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I spent many years with him. Yes. Uh -huh. What was special about his yoga that you liked, his particular style? What did you like about that? His hands touching me, oh. adjusting me, assisting me, putting me into asanas, uh -huh. believing, believing in me. You know, he was, astro he was an astrologer. Oh, I didn't know that. He came from a family of astrologers. So when he first met anyone who wanted to study with him, he would ask, what is your birthday? Uh -huh. And then he would do your chart. Mm. And he would determine a lot, I think, from that. And so for some reason, I mean, praise all glories to Sri Krishna, 
um, he liked me and David, and so we, we were very blessed. And very so blessed. that blessed your school in a sense. You caught, you carried some of that teachings into all three of those gurus. Yeah, all three of those gurus are still very active. And then the fourth one, Sri Shamdas Ji. Oh, Shamdas. Yeah, Shamdas. Yeah. Very, very powerful, important mm. teacher and guru to the Jivamukti method. And a beautiful, beautiful person. I yeah. know I spent just a little time with him. Yeah. He was an American. He was one of us, right? And devoted his life. Yes. And, mm. uh, you know, I think the, uh, the saying, you can tell someone who is very spiritually evolved by their cheerfulness, mm. their sense of joy. Yeah. And he certainly had that. Yeah, he all the time. That. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know, people consider you a teacher. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean as a not followers. I don't know. Do you have followers? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> but people do. They look up to you. And how do? What, what do you feel about that? I try to do my best and, and with my job. I try to do my job, which is to serve people. To serve people. Yeah, I'm a I'm a, a spiritual teacher. Yes. But it's that's a huge. I mean. It's, some people like it's a responsibility. I mean, it's yes. like yes, yes, it is. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not what some people say. It's like not an ego thing. It's like you are there for these people. Yes, that's a hard thing. I mean, to be in a sense, you know. Well, you just have to give up everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, that's not uh, that was not so hard for me. Uh -huh. So you at the beginning, yes. Uh -huh. At the beginning, I did. Um, uh, uh, rejected. I didn't want to be a teacher, yeah. Well, look at Ama, Amachi, you know, she just has given everything up yes. for, for, to hug people, you know, to, yeah. to love people. And, yeah. um, so this food book is another <laughs> way you're serving people. Yeah, I hope so. No, I it hope is. So. And you're enjoying yourself, though, too. It doesn't mean you can't, don't have to enjoy yourself. No, I mean, yoga is about happiness, joy. Come yeah. on. If you're, if you're not, like, Okay, the great yogi, a Catholic saint, mm -hmm. Saint um, Catherine of Siena oh. said, yeah, right, right, yeah. that uh, all the way to heaven has got to be heaven, or <laughs> <laughs> you might be on the wrong path. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. That is so funny. there's got to be a little bit of joy in every step of the way, mm -hmm. or um, where are you going? Well, what do you want for yourself? What is your ultimate vision for you or the world or you and the world or you? I'm just curious. Get I mean, close to God. But That's what I've always wanted. But you're already yeah. close. To, I I'm, mean, maybe. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's, it's a process. It's an, <laughs> no, it's ongoing. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's um, being with you. That's beautiful. It's doing nice. everything is, um, I mean, look at all the good things you're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is my service, and it's what I enjoy, yeah. and I like talking to people. I like um, giving put, people a microphone. I mean, look, that's like that's the greatest gift. Mm. I mean, yeah, giving people a voice to be giving heard. Giving people a voice. Yeah. So I'm trying to give animals a voice yes. with my animal rights message, because I, you know, I'm a yogi, so I really believe in uh, moksha, liberation, freedom. And um, slavery, I don't, I don't go for On it. any level? No. Not for animals, not for <laughs> no. humans, no. not for... <laughs> no. So you're, I'm an abolitionist. Oh, you know, I just, I interviewed this little girl, eight years old, who was fighting for children, against children's slavery. Uh -huh. Do you know her, Vivian Hare? No. She started a lemonade stand where she raised a million dollars. It caught on and companies donated to her and she raised a million dollars to stop ch child slavery around the world. Amazing. We should bring her to New York and have yeah. her speak. Where does she live? She lives in California, but now her lemonade is worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and she's doing incredible things. That's a movie I should show you. So what's the vision that you have of, of, of Jiva Mukti, of liberation, uh, for the planet? What do you, what do you, where do you want to take us all? Not you, <laughs> but where do you see is possible? Okay. Um, the Bhagavad Gita teaches that um, all we need to do is to act in remembrance of God, to perfect our actions, and a perfect action is a selfless action. So 
I'm just trying to be kind and remember God and let God do the rest. That's not mm -hmm. my job to figure out the results. So you're, and God is what for you? Shri Krishna. And All cr glories to Shri Krishna. But what does Krishna represent as a conscious? Love. Pure love. Love. Unconditional love. Satchit, mostly Ananda. <laughs> Bliss. Yeah. I've been talking to Sharon Gannon. Yeah. Jiva Mukti Yoga, really one of the founders, her and David Life, you and David Life, and he's doing yoga still, isn't he? Yeah. And you're still teaching there. And that's 841 Broadway. This is Sharon's new book, which is Simple Recipes for Joy, because it's all about joy. More than 200 delicious vegan recipes. And the website, is there a website for the book? Yes, it's www.simplerecipesforjoy.com. And I'm Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. If you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com, or email me at newrealities at earthlink.net. Thanks for watching, and see you at Jiva Mukti. Thank you.